Dear friends, in this tutorial, we are going to look into different ways of creating Pandas data frame. Now, if you have watched my previous two tutorials, then you should have a basic understanding on Pandas framework and also you should be familiar with data frame in general. So let's start a Jupyter Notebook as usual. Now you can use PyCharm, Notepad++, whatever IDE you prefer, but I like Jupyter Notebook because it is great with data visualization. Here I'm going to click on new button to start a new notebook, okay? Now I already have a CSV file for weather data. So you can see that this has a weather data where you have days, temperature, and so on. Now, the first way of creating a data frame is to directly read this CSV. Okay, so I'm going to import pandas as PD. And then uh, what you can do is PD dot read CSV read csv is a method that will read csv into a data frame so you can see the name of my csv is weather underscore data so it's weather underscore data dot csv and since it is in the same path as my jupyter notebook i'm just providing a file name but let's say if it was in some other folder then you will provide a full path name such as this okay all right, so this is my first way of creating a data frame. When I run this, you can see it created it successfully. Okay. My second way is to create a data frame from an Excel file. Okay, so the same way that you can use read CSV, you can use read Excel to read an Excel file. So I have in the same location, I have this file called weatherdata.xlsx. So let me close my CSV and open this xlsx file. It pretty much looks same as CSV, but the format is xlsx and the sheet name is sheet one. So I will provide full xlsx path and then sheet name will be sheet one and when I print it it creates data frame successfully so this was the second way third way is to create a data frame using a Python dictionary okay so here in this bracket you can specify a Python dictionary and that dictionary needs to have the data needed for your data frame okay so I have this little file where I have saved that dictionary. So I'm just going to copy paste to save time on recording. Okay, so as you can see that in my dictionary, I have this different keys and each of these keys represent the column in my data frame. So you can see day, temperature, wind speed, and event. And these are my row values, okay? So now I need to pass this dictionary as an argument into this function. And when you run this, again, my data frame is created successfully. So this was the third way. The fourth way of creating a data frame is to use a tuples list. So I'm just going to copy tuples list here you can see that this is a list and the list contains tuple each element in the list is a tuple okay and this tuple is nothing but a row in your uh, data frame okay now when you create your data frame one thing you need to do is you need to provide column names okay so here my column is day then the second guy is temperature then you have wind speed and then you have event when you run this 
once again it created a data frame successfully so this was a fourth way of creating a data frame using a list of tuples and don't forget to mention the name of columns here okay all right the last way that we are going to cover is a list of dictionaries so just let me let me just copy it from here okay now here the difference between the first approach where or this approach where i had a dictionary and each key contained values row values the difference here is that each element in the list represents one row along with its column specification so you can see this is a list and each record here has column value column value so let's now create pd dot data frame and supply this list as an argument and you can see that it created this dictionary uh, this uh, data frame as well so these were a couple of ways of creating uh, data frames we cover like five such ways there are more ways that you can create data frames so if you google pandas io then it will take you to pandas documentation where they specify you can basically read your data frame from different sources such as csv excel which we covered but then you have all these other sources such as html stats sas pickle so if you read through this documentation you'll know that this reading information from various sources into data frame is made easy by uh, these apis okay so that's all i had for this tutorial uh, in the next tutorial we are going to uh, look into reading and writing data from and to csv and excel files in the next tutorial okay until then uh, thanks for watching and if you like this tutorial please give it a thumbs up